three sides of the coin. It's all about our dream kiss movie. If they did one, what would it be about? What eras would be covered? Could you do the whole history of kiss in one movie in 90 minutes? Don't think so. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. Tommy and I are flying solo this week. Mark's got some work he's dealing with. So stick around. We've got two people sitting in. Two, I would say, friends of the family. Right? Yeah, I would say that's very accurate. We've got your all-time favorite, Izzy. Even though Izzy did get the crap beat out of him by Dr. Fuck. Yeah, well, they saw that one coming a mile away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no chance Izzy's going to beat anybody in any poll. Um, we should have a poll, Izzy versus a bottle of Jack <laughs> That's Daniels. not true. Loneliest dude in California, he'd freaking win. <laughs> anyway, Izzy's joining us. And Bryn from Flip is back. And we're going to have a fun little discussion this week. Yeah, this week we talk creative. about a Kiss movie. And what would we like to see along the lines of Motley Crue, Queen, Elton John, even that horrendous thing Def Leppard did for VH1 years ago. Ouch. What would we want in a Kiss movie? We all, what would you want? To and what do you want? So we, we we lay it all out, what we think should be in it, what will happen. Um, will it be a Gene and Paul movie? It's an interesting little bit that we get into. So mm -hmm. let it roll. Izzy and Bryn join us this week. Want to get your official Three Sides of the Coin logo and Shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. Hours of KISS Radio. Every week, Three Sides of the Coin Radio. Live, Sundays, 8 p.m. Pacific. Monsters of Rock Channel, Dash Radio Network. We program the radio show. We pick the songs. No corporate overlord telling us what to play. Only Kiss Deep Cuts. We play the songs the fans really want to hear. Three Sides of the Coin Radio. Every Sunday, 8 p.m. Pacific. Was it gonorrhea or chlamydia? No, it was neither. I thought it was a urinary tract infection. Because he's um, such a girl. Chicks get that, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's such a girl. Yeah, but guys get that, too. Um, anyways. Um, <laughs> I've never known a guy who's gotten it. All right. There we, are. there we are. There we are. Oh, we're, we're just getting our medical updates from Izzy. It's just uh, it, it's just basically the fact that I'm old. It's a yeast infection. How old are you? Uh, I'll be 47 in October. Oh, shut You're up. You're not old. You're not old. Yeah. You actually, you're gonna feel really set, really silly when you're like E three when you talked about being old at the age you are right now. So let so me protect, let me protect you right now from that anxiety coming at you down the line. Bobby has a point. Just don't put that thing where it doesn't belong, and it won't get infections, is he? You know, you do what you do, what you do, what you do. Wash your hands every night. You guys see oh, my look cool at that. thing? Can you guys see the cool thing I put right here? Yeah. Yes. Can you see this cool thing? That's cooler. That's even cooler. And then, like, kind of like a magic trick, it goes, oh, 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 and it changes color. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, <laughs> the kind, that's the kind of magic oh, trick my daughter. That's the kind of magic my daughter does. <laughs> She's like, Daddy, close your eyes and turn around and don't look. Uh, See? Felix, now close did that to, Felix did that to me once. Dad, I want to do you a magic trick. Okay. Okay. Close your eyes. And I about peed my pants right there. Uh, okay. So, 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 um, Bryn, we'll give you plenty of time to, to plug the new release throughout this whole thing. But I think a main topic of discussion is, um, 
sense. My cool shirt. Exactly. I want I, it. Is, Izzy's cool shirt. What does yours say, Izzy? Tinder? Tinder for president. Oh, we just lost so, Tommy. Bye, bye Tommy. It's right. the uh, bass player from Faster Pussycat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Make him president. Can't be any worse. Um, Don't we get will, started. We will, <laughs> we, will, we will talk about uh, a, what we would like to see in a KISS biopic. You know, since Motley Crue's done it, Elton John, Queen, what do we think should be in it? What stories, what eras, all of that. Um, and where the hell did Tommy go? Sometimes this guy is as bad as Mark. Tommy. What did it say? I just well, crashed. Didn't. Be back soon. Getting a new computer in a few weeks. Okay. Um, That's I'll not the same as soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be back soon, like in a few weeks. I should have had the weather girl randomly show up here while we were doing this. Are you got a date with her? Oh, we're going to hang, yeah. The hell is that? That was my alarm. Telling you to go take a dump? No, I told you. I did that before. <laughs> You're so considerate. I, uh, I, you know, uh, I care. Uh, all, right, all right, guys. So let, let, let's get this, this show on the road here. So we would be joined, so, but we would be joined by Tommy, everyone. But um, Tommy's computer crashed yet again. It, it's like every I might have crashes. to boycott. No, um, no. And and Mark is just busy at work, so you just got me and these two knuckleheads. Oh, I want one of those two. And for those of you listening and can't see, those two knuckleheads would be Izzy. Woo-hoo. Hi, everybody who voted for Izzy, applaud. What did he? Run, what was he running from? He was running from Doctor Fuck. Dr. Fuck just pounced on you, man. Yeah. Well, it was that fucking promo I did. I, I put him over like you wouldn't believe. Who is that? A pro wrestler or something? Yeah. Doctor? <laughs> He's another podcaster, video blogger. Is, <clears throat> is, is, is he and Dr. Fuck kind of went uh, at it, bumped heads? Bumped tongues. Yeah, I so we ran, we ran a poll as to who people liked more, Izzy or Dr. Fuck, and... It was like 70% Nobody Dr. Responded. Fuck. Nobody cared about Izzy except for Izzy. Well, I think the problem was you put it up before the show sure. aired when you said we should do this. Should I do it again now no. and see no. if it changes? Because it won't. Yeah, he's got his cretinous humanoids. That's fine. And what do you got? Loyal minions. You don't have anybody listening to you unless you come on three sides. Yeah, okay. And and of course we're joined by Brent. Want... From Flip. <laughs> Can you see that? I'm just, it's I'm the just brand new at... beautiful. The it's, best it's... of the worst of Flip. It's an, which colors? An awesome looking picture disc. Flip, get it? So 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 Brent, before we get into some talking here, um, when did the album come out? Wasn't it Talk just like the last me. week? I, you know, I don't even know an exact date. We did a release gig last Saturday, which would be what? What year is it? So um went great. Nice. I got nothing. Have you got awesome. have you gotten your, your platinum album for a million sales yet? No, but uh, right now an award is being put together for Night Bob for the Night Bob shirt. He's the number one selling Rocksteady Records artist at the moment. <laughs> Good for him. Right. right now Flip is just worried about going aluminum. Yes, cardboard. 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 That's so that way everybody gets it. So so it it's a it's a basically a greatest hits if Flip could have greatest hits, right? <laughs> Pretty much. It's, <laughs> It's yeah, they're deep. You know, Flip's kind of almost like a, no pun intended deep cuts band. I mean, Freak went to number thirty eight, bless it. But you know, we didn't want to put out a single, really. <laughs> and like, and, and regionally speaking, you know, I wish I was a planet and half a brain did. Half a brain did a lot of airtime, uh, as did later on. Change, you know, got some airplay. I know, and some of it's in movie soundtracks. 
So it's kind of like your smashes, thrashes, and hits. So, You've got the greatest so, hits plus some new songs. It's not even close to smashes and thrashes. <laughs> it's like trash. Yeah, this is just all trash. Yeah, trashes and trasherer is. <laughs> trashes and shits. That's why it's the best of the worst of. Love it. <laughs> and there's there's interesting stories that go along with the tale of all of it, from like having a song go to number 38, have the next single be radio tested, and come back number one as a crossover. I still love rock and roll on, at the time, alternative rock, classic rock, and modern pop. And then, like, having the record label completely bite the dust. Gee, there's you know? a familiar story, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, it's, old as, it's as old as time to us now, you know what I mean? There was a time when that kind of stuff was covered up with with good, good copies. We'll right. Call it, you know? they, they, and, they'd make another know, lie to cover it all up. It was called something else, you know? It was like creative uh, wordplay. So anyway, I mean, so there is fun, fun stuff to talk about there. But really? more importantly than that, I think really what we should do is sit back and hope for the best. That's should all we, you can do. Should we, should we, we talk about Kiss so yeah. people don't hit the stop button? I, I have one question before we move on. Brent, um, you, you, oh, yeah, we have to. Um, I have so many Phil if, stories. If the record company hadn't folded, how much longer would Phil. Flip How much longer would Flip have gone? I love we, Phil. We all love that's Phil. Like, that's like crystal ball question, of course. If you're looking for a finite answer, it doesn't exist. Right. But what religion does God like best? <laughs> We we know he likes three sides best. <laughs> yeah, that's evident. Yeah, the god of thunder. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. The only maybe the, the only real god that you know. K kiss Christianity, right? Yeah. Oh God, let's not go. Tommy, there. can you see my thing here? No, put it, put it back in your pants, Bren. Put it in your pants. That one, <laughs> that one awards. Me and Kai did that together. Yeah. Yeah, his brother Kai is a very gifted artist. Along I, his, yeah. his friend. yeah, I saw footage. I, I might have even Kai might have called me from their warehouse on his phone when he was with Paul or something. I don't remember exactly, but this was right in the background, and I was like, "Cool," because you know you did good when the band is displaying it in their warehouse. You know, I thought, so that was kind of fun. Nerdology. As far as how far Flip would have gone, who knows? Is he? I have no idea. I was really tired out, man. I right. have been doing this for a freaking long time. You know, I was. I think I. Tommy knows the story. We were on tour, and we had did it. Did a. Sh we were on tour with. Uh, Banana. I am. I am. I am. I Stone Temple up. Pilots. Stone Temple Pilots and Chainsaw Band. Uh, Jackal. Jackal. And I got done. We were the opening act, first of three, and went out there, took my makeup off, went out into the crowd. This kid comes up to me and goes, are you Flip's dad? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and literally, the first time I ever played, I think was in front of my whole school, was 1969. I like to think it was 1969. Might have been 71, but I try to push it back because I like the idea of it being... Because it might have been fifth grade. How old are you in fifth grade? Oh, 10, 11. 10, oh. 11. Yeah, that sounds about right. Tommy, you know Izzy, that you got no age very clue. well. <laughs> so I was tired out, Izzy, by that time. So I don't know what to say. But that being said, I had to take care of my mental health. Mm. Did, did a lot of uh, work mm. on myself. That has proven to be a really wise move. Work on my marriage. Uh, spend a lot of time with my children. And it really all happened. It, it isn't coincidence that that Tom Scholes and uh, Chrissy Hine, and for every right reason, sued at that time because the music business was beginning to show, you know, Napster-itis at that time, and you knew it was going down. So the pe it was it was certainly a completely thought through uh, exercise on their parts, correctly so. Right. Done. 
done with that question. Is well, there so 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 real real real, yes. real 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 quick though, Bryn. So the yeah. album is available anywhere you can buy records. Anywhere. I want to say I want to put up a thing anywhere records can be found with a question mark at the end. So anywhere records can be found. It's like, <laughs> is that the T-shirt that comes with the bundle? I don't know. Oh, it should, because I want that. Um, I I also want to mention too that you guys should look for some of other Bren's some of other work by Bren because he's been in several different bands. Um, Obsession, which was here locally, um, and I, you guys have that live thing out now, don't you? <laughs> what live thing? Well, isn't there a live I'm thing out? Squishing Tommy's head with Peter Chris. Okay, what? Yeah. <laughs> the, the live thing. The live thing for Obsession. Isn't there a live recording out for Obsession? Ah, uh, oh, there's an Obsession thing out too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was, was just saying, recorded live at a sound check. Okay. Live at a sound check in 1984 two. or five. Three, okay. two. No, it had, I thought I thought you said 83. 83. 83. 83. And, and that at also, that time, I was writing like crazy. And we were in East Grand Forks playing a gig. So we had to go early to get all the gear there in time for our weekend gig, you know. At that time, I was doing 300-plus shows a year regularly for five, six years in a row. Um, and anyway, I really was sick and tired well, I'm not sick and tired. My very first band did my first show when I was in the seventh grade was half original material. So that being said, I, I had had a bunch of material. I wanted to go there early and go through it all. And so thank God my sound man at the time, Joe Sinkowski, recorded it all. Yeah, so, it's, it's like it actually 12, sounds real 15 good. tunes, direct to cassette, live at a club with just the, whatever mics we had. That After that weekend gig, at three in the morning, East Grand Forks on the Canada, Minnesota, I believe, either North Dakota or Michigan border, whichever one. North Dakota. Uh, North, Dakota. North Dakota border. Well, and the reason I want to mention this was traumatic brain injury number three. I went through the windshield of a Cadillac at 55 miles an hour at two in the morning, with, hit a T in the road. Greg's older brother, Irv, was driving the car. You met Irv at the Obsession reunion, I believe, Tommy. Yeah. Um, I got rushed to the hospital that night. I went through the windshield, out into a farm field. Johnny Mac, you know Johnny Mac, my best friend from back at, all the way back, was lying in the back seat, hit the seat, so he was able to go out at 2 in the morning, went about a half a mile to a neighboring farmhouse. By that time he got back, an ambulance was there grabbed us took cut all my clothes off of me and i don't remember any of this so then i started to come through in the ambulance and the guy goes what do you do for a living and at this time it's 1983 84 i was like nikki six world my hair was huge it wasn't like because of nikki six it was at the same time as nikki six you know i was doing johnny thunders and shit cowboy hat filled with blood i said i'm in a band called obsession well sing me one of your songs and they wanted to make sure i'm okay the guy's gone i go if the good die young will live for the guy goes okay move on end of the story is is i made the gig in hopkins minnesota the next night jesus that's crazy. what a trooper well, I yeah, I and, God but, literally went straight, me and Johnny Mac, blind, walked to the Greyhound bus station, took a Greyhound bus, got in Minneapolis about 8.30, 9 o'clock that night. My roommate, Gary Vogel, picked us up in his tiny little pickup truck. The three of us squeezed in there. I was in doctor scrubs with a cowboy hat with blood, dried blood all over it. I sat and played the gig in a chair. And at that time, people came up to me and said, great new look, man. Great new look. <laughs> I had stitches all the way across my chin and all the way across half of my face. And uh, my wife of 35 years now, Susan, was actually the person who took those stitches out. And what year was that? Did we say 83? There you uh, go. Probably. I well, and grass and talk too much. No, not at all, because these are always entertaining stories. But the reason I brought it up is I want people to understand how much uh, music you've recorded over the years and that 
if you like the flip stuff, you need to check some of this other stuff out. And I'm not just pimping for Brent. I really enjoy it. And so Obsession, for those of you, many that wouldn't know, it's like if you can remember your favorite rock band in the town you lived in that you so badly thought for sure was going to make it you know and totally. really become big that's what obsession was so for those of you who love that 80s rock music from that band that's the kind of stuff so look for that but also too you know he was in rattling bones and then on top of that one of my personal favorites there you go uh sorry the homer's on and um one of my personal favorites is the odd father stuff uh, i just so Guys, go out and check this shit out. So pick up the flip thing, but also check out the other stuff because there's a lot of great music there. Thank you. you know, there is. There Thank really you. is. You know, I was I I have came from the studio, a different studio, working with this phenomenal teenage band that you know of, or not teenage young band from Minneapolis now that I'm managing called the Carnegies. So mm. I was just with them working and had to rush back from uh, Ambient Studios to come back here and pluck back into my little overdub studio here i have so in my house. Just, just so everybody knows bryn rushes back from the studio to join three sides of the coin and izzy rushes off of the toilet to join three sides of the coin yeah <laughs> like i said hey. i i shit during days of our lives before this because i care and i don't miss days of our lives for anybody and i think there's a good chance that izzy's situation sounded better than mine did <laughs> <laughs> well, the older you get, the more you enjoy it. You know, right? Exactly. Sonically <laughs> speaking, yes. <laughs> all, right, all right, guys. So we've probably got two listeners left at this point who are like, "What the fuck are these guys talking about?" So let's talk about Kiss. And and like I, I threw it out there just bef before your computer crashed, Tommy. Let's talk about. What? That came room to dress up my room when Tommy was out. I went, ooh, I'm going to put this over there. Ooh, I'm going to put this over there. Tommy's cool stuff is all on the other side of the camera, so we can never see it. I know. Mine was all over in the other side of my room here. Because it bugs people. <laughs> I like it. Um, <laughs> let, let, let's talk about what we would like to see in a Kiss biopic. You know, if Kiss did a movie like... Um, Motley Crue or Elton John or Queen, what do we want to see in it? What should be in it? What eras? Um, yeah, and, and, and it's kind of just a free-for-all discussion, and I'll just throw out my first thought is, it seems to me there's no way they could cover the band's entire career no. in one movie. Just way, It would either be so high level that they would skip over so much stuff to try and cover everything so it really has to be you know a, a, a finite period you know three years four year period of time that they could do a real story out of it i mean do you guys agree with that i i i, I uh, well no that's not the only way of course it could be done it could be done bad like the Def leopard one or something you know but that being said i love the idea you just had, I agree. I would part it out and not even put it out as a single release. I would part it out, meaning do the first this many years, then this many years, whatever makes production-wise and makes sense for them. I think it would be really cool. And not only that, if you almost even filmed it in real time, the actors would actually begin to age in real time if you use the same ones and took a year in between two years in between and then the next phase sure. 1977 they're actually two years older than they were at the daisy in 74 or whatever <laughs> I, I, I if i if i had the choice to do it though what i would do is, is i would actually have gene and paul on camera starting to reminisce almost like the narrator like um uh, like the rise to it video Trump. no not not that cheesy uh, or but, eyes to a video. Yeah, well, I was thinking more along the lines of Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Thanks. You know, and, and just kind of talk through some things through the movie, but then have the actors portraying them do all of the scenes. But I think the key is is that you got to be true to your timeline. You can't make shit up, and you can't put it in the wrong order. Order. It's got to be... The mic should make the movie. I agree. You and Mike should make the movie. <laughs> yeah, I, but if... I'm if not even lying. 
it, completely. It's not a joke. I'm not being sarcastic. It's just like I think you guys just both nailed it. I would go, yep, get started. Yeah, but the problem with putting these two in charge of the movie, they would erase Ace Fraley from history, and Tommy Thayer would have been in the band the entire time. <laughs> That's not, not even true. real. We'd erase, <laughs> we'd erase Izzy Presley from the face of the earth in our movie somehow. <laughs> That's, real. That's about as real as that I'm wearing pants right now. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, I like the parting it out, but it, and I think it would sell. I love that idea. But it's not going to be, let's face it, it's not going to be the kind of picture that will go to theaters because it, you can't wrap it up in a nice little bowl with 45 years. It's going to have to be in sections. So you would almost do it broken up the way they did Kissology because I do believe yep. that each section of the band should have the same amount of time and care given to it. So yep. if the first one was from the inception till Peter leaves or actually through unmasked, then they pick up at the elder and make it all the way through the non I think that's I think that's even too too much of a Kissology time frame. I th I think, you know, like if you were to do the first episode, it would almost have to be from a little bit of wicked laughter. So you oh, can yeah. see the breakup and how it transitions up to Kiss Alive. It's and almost maybe it's a series. It, maybe it's a series. The ending has got to be Gene in Israel and Paul and his sister's relationship and his parents' relationship. That's got to be in there. Peter's got to be in there in, a, in, a, in the street fighting. Ace has got to be in there turning 15 the first time he ever got drunk and threw up at a park. You know, uh, I think it's got to go back earlier than that. Paul's got to got to show him get the microtia bullying. Um, all of that would have to be in the first thing. I don't even think would almost barely touch. It would be up to when the band first meets so then it's a series maybe it's a series like a mini that, series that's a great idea well Not I, a film, I, I, but I, a series. I think that is what as diehard kiss it's fans big. we would love to see yes but mm -hmm. i think the reality is a production Ooh, company true. is going to go we've got budget we're doing one 90 minute film here that's what's that's it, it going to be um so, and, and that was the premise of the initial throw out the topic here. If we were going to get one 90 minute a la like Motley Crue did, Queen, Elton John, even the horrendous Def Leppard one, um, what would it be? Because the honest reality is we're not going to get a series of six different ones that, right. that right. But we if, would but love to see. Because no one's going to put that kind of money up. Right, but you can't end it at a live because that's you got to go at least go to Super Kiss. You got to go to seventy seven at the very well earliest. I, I, I mean, so this this is this is this is the discussion. I mean, I think would, the would, business would, model would be what let's let's step back and watch some Beatle. You know, um, but the Beatle anthology was a perfect example of that kind of I, thing. Right? Yeah. But they weren't, there wasn't nearly, I mean, Kiss have been together freaking 10 times as long as the Beatles were. Mm -hmm. I know, and they the still put out like eight hours. People so forget that. Greater. So you know, it, would that. Be a it would be tough. I know what I want to see, which isn't what would make the movie, and I still want to know more about the actual studio time, songwriting process, uh, recording process, the rooms, the gear. Uh, but then you're looking long, more like an how anthology. How long they worked on this song, how long they worked on that song. Was that song, did they just walk in with it that day? Uh, you know, that sort of thing. I want more in an in-depth thing. Out. What kind of amps did they use? What kind of guitars did yeah, they use? Yeah, but that, that's too... But then I mean, you're looking I, at two I, different I would, projects. Yeah, I, I would yeah. love that too as a diehard fan. But again, we've got, we've got to sit back and go, what will the general population who is the ones buying all the tickets now to go to a KISS show, they don't give, give a crap about in the studio. They maybe just want the memories of KISS. And, and Tommy, to your point, Super KISS is kind of that. It's got to be in there. So maybe there's a, a little bit of 
from the inception of Kiss up to Alive. Uh, just, a, you know, they dedicate, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to that, kind of setting up who Kiss was. But then the bulk of the story kicks off when Kiss explodes with Alive. With Alive. And mm-hmm. up through Dynasty. You've lost me already because I was so into him before Alive. I mean, I lo- not nothing about post-Alive, but I hunger for everything up to that point. Well, <laughs> Which is well, fair, but so you're talking about two separate projects. So maybe we're coming up with the 90-minute version or 120-minute right. version that's the biopic like Michael was, was asking, to but me, then also to an anthology. Right then. There's so many... There's so many movies, then you could literally almost say, okay, insert new band here, insert mm-hmm. new challenge here. You know, you could literally put it up on the screen and probably put it together, edit for edit. Well, uh, I haven't seen Elton John yet. Have you guys seen the Elton John film? No, I, I have haven't. Not. But okay, because I, I have no idea how late it goes. I mean, where it stops. Well, I I, I don't know, but I, I got to imagine it can't cover his entire career. They've got There's no to, way. They've got to... They've got jump over very very quickly i mean just like motley Crue, you know all of a sudden they're in a reunion and then you know they're touring 10 years later it's like well wait wait a second where did all that time go it you know you have to watch but it I, two different I think trains almost you have to watch it like you would almost a sitcom and then if you want to watch it in your other brain as a critical person who who knows better uh, you almost got to. It's almost like you got to view it from two different angles. Well, you got to. You got. Like, you got to produce it for two different audiences. Is what 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 you're basically saying. Or you got to view it with two different views. I for me, I view it with two different views. Did I enjoy those movies? I enjoyed all of them. Did are they historically correct? No. Right. Do I want to talk about where they're not historically correct? Not really. It's pretty obvious. Uh, you know. All but but, but I but I but I think that's why you make a it's different like a, a different film for each audience. One for the general audience who doesn't give a crap about all of the dirt, the details behind the scenes, just wants to kind of relive the glory of Kiss in the seventies. Four solo movies. You know, but ah! but but then then you do another another one that's targeted straight for like the four of us. Who it's like, yeah, we do actually care about the facts. So you got to take the time to do the timeline right, the facts right, the names right, the history right. That's the type of stuff the average Joe Blow doesn't give a crap about. And so maybe a very dedicated, talented team willing to work for negative pennies. Right. Yeah. That's the problem. So you basically want a behind the music and a dirt. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. Well, I, 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 I think, I think I you, wanted that jump down. I think you need sort of, you you would need both of those to appease the two primary audiences that Kiss had. I mean, because Kiss is we're pushing fifty years here, right? And you're going to get years. Gene, Gene taking photos and having sex with supposedly everything under the sun so that would definitely be as much as that was pushed that equally has to have that same piece of the pie in the movie so there'd be a lot of bad like yeah but i'd be willing to bet you that if you talk to harsh shit like the motley crew one right if you, talk to, if you talk to the hardcore queen fans i'm sure a lot of them will tell you they were very disappointed with the film even though a lot of people loved it because of the inaccuracies and stuff. So I'm already going yeah. into this thinking that if there's going to be a Kiss biopic, it's going to be messed up. It's not going to be accurate. Well, I hope. Of, God of be- course it is, right. because because whoever's producing it at the end of the day sits here and goes, all right, you've got to cut 15 minutes from what you film because that's just the way it is. And I don't care where you cut it from, you're cutting it. But if, if one of the things that everyone can agree upon is that meeting of Peter Chris where they call him up on the phone, that's got to happen. If they right. if, if they if Ace Fraley shows up with one orange sneaker and one red sneaker to it to audition, that's got to happen. And it can't happen after they put out "I Was Made for Loving You." No, you're you're you know? you're a hundred percent. It 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 can't happen that way. We all know it very well could <laughs> happen that way. Um, I'm watching it right now. I like it. You know, it, 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 it's what's interesting, though, is there are, you know, like you said, Tommy, there's 
those important stories like when Ace auditions, that's got to be in there. Yeah. But yeah. when you think about this entire band's this band's entire history, whether you love the lineups or the albums or whatever, there's a shitload of um, of moments in their history that are really important. I mean, you've got yeah. the the audition. You've got yeah. You've got Kiss Alive breaking and saving the label. Then you've got Super Kiss from from Destroyer up to Dynasty. Then all of a sudden you've got this whole Dynasty unmasked Elder era, which frankly I think would more appeal to diehards than the average person. They'll but, skip over it and go to the unmasked. But that stuff. that is such a huge era in changing of the band's mindset and direction and then you've got taking the makeup off that in itself is absolutely huge to get the stories behind that and then the whole 80s without makeup i mean the stories that could be told of you know them competing against bon jovi and def leppard and wanting to be this and wanting to be that and you know the struggles out on the road and then you come back to guess what putting the makeup back on again and you start the whole storyline all over again. I mean, honestly, couldn't there just be a movie from the reunion on? There's enough stuff in that era oh, of yeah. the band that you could just do the uh, a, a Kiss movie about the reunion. I have a yeah. feeling. I have a feeling that the entire non makeup era is gonna get kind of skated over that's going to be the blink of the eye moment where yep. all all of a sudden there's taking the makeup off at mtv and then the next scene cuts to tiger stadium <laughs> yeah what i yeah. what i am kind of curious to see is what happens with the neil bogart bill of coin movie in which uh kisses portrayed how that's portrayed because there certainly is a big portion of the movie that could be absorbed into bill's story mm -hmm. if the director or writers deemed it worthy you know right. there's a yeah. lot of you know probably sex there's a lot of the sex and drug stuff that they certainly we all like to watch and is always right. there, i guess i guess it's certainly there with kiss and to ignore it would be like okay and like you, but you, you, that you, being said, once again, you run into the same wall. If they've been together and doing it for so long that to really portray it properly is a monumental task mm -hmm. in in every fashion, be it details, storyline, personnel, production, you know, good lord, filling the street up with the right year of cars, you know, it's like but, good lord. I can't even begin. Well, and and, and Bryn, you know, you know that even though they might they would make this film to appeal to the general audience, the yes. diehards are going to crucify it for inaccuracies. No. Look, 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 look at what happened with Detroit People Rock like City the and the freaking logo in Detroit Rock City. That one thing alone continues to get crucified. Oh, look I, at that. Right. Look at it. I won't. I right. can look at it, it with complete entertainment value and take it 100%. And that's what you have what to do. And not yell at it for not being that. <laughs> yeah, Mr. fucking Motley Crue, the dirt, losing his shit every day, Branvold. Still pisses Izzy off. So, Izzy, what would, you, what would you say if the Kiss movie all of a sudden had Doc McGee introducing the band to Bill O'Coin? <laughs> Would you go, oh, hey, that's entertaining. Yeah. Laugh. Or would you I go, would what roll the my fuck? eyes and laugh. I would that's roll my eyes and I laugh. I thought you were pitching. Isn't that the movie you pitched? <laughs> <laughs> well, but you What's know, up, with, the, but with the technology today and the advent of all of these independent filmmakers, couldn't you cut some of the things, like you, to your point about the cars, couldn't you do... Okay, couldn't you do just tight scenes standing outside of Electric Lady, which still no. exists? It's New York City. It's, it's impossible. They, you're, you're, literally, you're literally pointing at one tree in a giant forest and going, I know how to take care of that tree. There's no, like I know. But isn't, them, there but a I, way, but isn't there a way to cut some of those corners well, from just, you a know, production standpoint? I don't know there, about There is making. a way. You know, so many of the movies you watch today are not seen 
it's all blue screen and green screen, right. green yep. screen or whatever. So maybe doing a more, what do they call it, CGI-based CGI. Uh, movie might not even be the worst move because then they can age the people appropriately too and they're not they're not anchored down to actors trying to age actors always looks goofy but you know what i'm saying yeah. i got i got nothing really but a cgi version might work kissology the movie you know yeah, yeah. but but at the at the end even with cgi Unless the people who are doing the special effects are big enough Kiss fans Absolutely. to know, they're just going to go, oh, hey, it's, it's a Kiss poster. No, that's a Kiss poster from 1982. You can't put that in the scene from 1977. Well, here's the good news there. The good news there is, I, you know, Tommy Thayer is a hard-working son of a bitch. I don't know if he's got the time, energy, mind, or desire to do it. But that being said... Him being actually that tight in the company and being that knowledgeable of the past, you almost couldn't ask for a better. No, you're 100 you know, percent right. 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 I so mean, and, he's and, right there. And, That's a good thing. And and let's be honest, with I'll Detroit help. Rock City, they really did attempt very hard to maintain accuracy. I mean, I yeah. I, I, I knew Tim Sullivan very well back then, and yeah. I, he and I would talk all the time, and he's just like, Mike, you know, we need a, a Kiss beach towel from 1977 because we're going to put it in the background of a scene, and he's like, it's got to be a real beach towel. It's got to be a real T-shirt from the 70s. Or so you, you can get people to do it, I think in Detroit Rock City's case, Kiss was fortunate enough that most of the people in in decision making were Kiss fans. I mean, yeah. Adam Rifkin was a Kiss fan. Tim Sullivan's and, a Kiss fan. Um, and they did a phenomenal job with that movie. And P get, Peter Shank, who, who edited, it, was a Kiss fan. So logo, you know that that that's that can be done. But it, I think we all know it comes down to well the. The production company be willing to pay and hire these people to do that when they might be able to save a few thousand dollars because they got somebody on staff who can cut and they've it. got to really pay somebody because let's imagine if you're tommy thayer it's basically going to arrest you for a very long period of time it's not like you can do that and a million other things at the same time right. it's like what we're talking about would would be Ninety per nine percent of your energy, you know. Yeah, for the next that, two years, Tommy, all you're doing is overse overseeing the the production of this movie. Well, maybe he could do that after the end of the road is over. I don't know. He's the he may not. He's the perfect guy to work mm -hmm. with the band and take over the the history because it would be done right. And not only that, I guess he's probably the. He probably also. I'm thinking of him. He's probably would be going. I also know three other guys. No, that's here. exactly it. He knows where to go to get the person who can answer it, to get the 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 authentic item that you need to put in the scene. Chikini. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say that. Well, yeah, Chikini's basement. Sharp is could be a great help and stuff like that. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah so well, yeah, they, Peter they, Arquette. There's so many of them. <laughs> They, they, they. I think to some extent, you know, you're right, Izzy. For the most part, this is just entertainment. Mm -hmm. But I, I would hope Gene and Paul and Tommy would sit there and go, "Listen, it's entertainment, but we're going to get our asses handed to us if this is completely wrong in everything." Or, or do they go, "We could get paid twice. Now let's make the real one." <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Let's first make a shitty one, get a good check, let everybody complain and whine, and then make the real one. That way we can make both of them. Can't do and, it in reverse. Yeah, but, right. but and look but, like heroes. But Bryn, you know they're not going to make it. It's not their Kiss isn't putting the no, money up I, for this. Of course not. Of course not. You know, not. Gene it, and Paul are pitching the deal and the idea to a movie studio or to Netflix. Like here, here. Probably a very advanced licensing deal by all intent and purpose. That's exactly with, with, what it is. With first writer refusal, uh, you know, in there. Create creative control 
ends yep. with Gene and Paul, which I understand that, that that's what it was with the Motley Crue movie. Nikki, I, I don't know if it was the whole band, but at least Nikki and I think Mick had creative control over the Dirt movie. Um, I love I'm, Mick I'm, Mars. I'm, I'm sure oh, Gene and Paul not? would get the same thing. But yeah, you know, they 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 know they would get crucified by us and every other podcast and every fan out there would be ripping the details apart one or two wrong not a big thing but if it's scene after scene after scene that says a lot and it's not are you trying to tell me you put football on sundays the day before you go to work because those people that inherently want to yell at shit want to do it the day before they have to go back to work to me that's what you're really talking about there (laughs) I was going to say it's going to be it, somebody. It don't even matter what yeah. color you paint it. Somebody's going to say you missed yep. this. Oh no, and no, then, you're you're right. There's always going to be somebody ripping it apart. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you try to have as few errors as possible, it's different than ah, yes. don't give a shit because it's just going to get ripped apart anyway. So yeah, put put the unmasked poster in, in the 1970s. It's Kiss, right? Yeah, it's Kiss. No problem. I'd put you on the advisory board for sure. I'd be like, call Mike up. We got this, this, you know. You'd be one of the guys I'd bring in. It's fun to fantasize about the team you'd put together to be your encyclopedia, especially when at Bill's house I royally kicked his ass and kissed trivia on the computer. <laughs> Tell people about tell tell people what you mean by that because it, this is fascinating because I, I think one of the interesting things when we have someone like Brent on because he's so ingrained in the music business I I've learned a lot in our conversations over the years but explain to them Bill's point of view on Kiss and why you can beat his ass at trivia because <laughs> Bill's so I love him so much and he's so double extra super awesome one night at his house in. Uh, Hollywood, Florida, many nights I spent with them. As you know, I worked with them for years, right? Tommy, you yeah. know that, right? Yeah, starting in 86. That being said, um, late one night I said, Bill, I'll take you on and kiss trivia. And this was, I forget exactly what year. And we're playing, and I'm like thinking I'm doing bad because he's answering, he knows. I kicked his ass royal, like literally seven to one on the questions like i'd be right sometime because and there were questions based on names of songs albums uh and things like that and he doesn't pay attention to that so one night i'm at a bar with art alexakis from everclear we're doing a record together in hollywood and bill is with us and i nudge art i go check this out i go hey bill what do you think is a better album Beth or rock and roll all night? Little six pack. Beth is a better album. Beth is. <laughs> he he knows what did well. He doesn't know the name. He didn't know the names of. Well, I mean, how many any song? I he rock and roll all night. He probably called it that rock and roll song. Wow. Listen, we 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 laugh about it, but and maybe Bryn, you can attest to this too. He'll tell you, you what year. He got the deal with uh, Kiss, if that's your game. Kiss, he'll tell you exactly what year, what day, what time of year it was, what month it was, what where his office was at this time, when he handed this guy that check that was huge, or got this check from that that was huge, or in Australia, what went on there, all of that. So he remembers that perfectly in those what do you say, Tommy? What would you call that? You know, that influx of information sticks to him. Not song titles, not what album came out first, second. Because his focus was different than the fans and a different Kiss than the Alive yep. did not come out because they wanted to put a live album out. It was put out as a double album because they had two albums left on the contract and they wanted out. So if they put out a double album and can get out of the contract fulfilled, that's why it's a double album. See, Bill Bill remembers the business of not Kiss, just, not the music and the creativity of Kiss, because that that really wasn't his job. That was the band's job. But what I was what I was getting to is how many times have we been at a, at a Kiss show, 
and Paul attributes every song to coming off of Kiss Alive because he can't freaking remember what album a song came off of. If I say Kiss Alive, it pretty much captures anything from that period of time. That was well, a I hit. Think he, I think he's playing to the audience there. I don't know, man. He sure seems into it to me. He might get it wrong once in a while, but I think he can tell you Coming Home is off the second album. I think he can tell you... Uh, Deuces off the first album. I'll bet he can tell you, Do You Love Me in Detroit Rock City are off a Destroyer. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I think he does that because that's what the audience knows. That's or, it's just a random, or it's just a random mistake. Well, you could be right, but God, he sure seems on top of his game. Well, to me. I, I, I think for the most part, yes, he is on top of it. But, man, there's been times where I'm like, it sounds like he's lost a little bit on where this song intro is coming from. And Kiss Alive, Kiss Alive 2, that kind of saves your butt because any hit came off of those two albums. Well, let's just, you know, let's not forget he's not a spring chicken. You know, I think you know? you got to start to forget shit amount. when you get older. Flip and Kiss had the same amount of actual hit songs, I think, during that time period. <laughs> During the seventies, two? No, in the you know, to kiss during the period that Flip was at its height, I think we had more hits than Kiss did. Yeah, probably. So same. I'm talking out of my ass. I'm making it up. I don't know. You're, 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 it's like interviewing Gene Simmons here. <laughs> <laughs> Just I like the guy on Howard Stern that imitates Gene Simmons. I guess. I guess. Craig Gass, Craig Gass is, is hilarious. Great. All right, so back to the now, movie. What do you want to do? Back, back, back to the movie. I mean, did we, did we already? Is that topic dead? Can we talk it some seems more? It's like about an it? obvious one to me. Yeah, it's uh, to me. It is. It's like honestly, there's no way they can do it all. We have to enjoy what it is we get, and that is what it is. I, we don't get to pick and choose where the details are going to live. But I would guess there would be a nugget for each guy that would suffice even the hardcore fan. Like, give really try to give each KISS member one thing in their life that maybe we're not aware of in the movie. Just one little... When, when you mean yeah. every member, every member of the band or just the original four? Oh, I guess just the original four, don't I? I don't know. Well, I don't know because it all depends on the timeline. I guess I don't know. I didn't think that hard about it. Maybe all of them. Then, God, that was hard. There we go. We're running right into that same I'm, brick I'm, wall. I mean, yeah, I mean that that's a that's a big question. Would the movie only feature the original four guys of Kiss and not everybody else who's been in no, the band? No, because the Tommy and Ace thing has to be in there, and the recent Ace Fraley stuff should be in there, and. Well, and then you know, Eric Carr and Eric Singer and and Bruce Eric Kulik Clark. and yeah. Here, all here, that here, stuff. Here's here's the problem because I think we pretty much all agree they're going to gloss over the '80s very quickly. Mm. That pretty much wipes out most of Bruce right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark St. John, yeah. For the most part, most of Didn't Eric Carr is gone as well. Time? Vinnie Vincent. Okay. Is that when they made babies? Is that was the period when they started having babies? Right, the the eighties, the, the mid eighties. It's just it's so, gonna it's good it's gonna be just like in a Motley movie crucial. with John Karabi. Yeah, it's just gonna yeah, be a quick see, reference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll be like they'll be in the studio recording Animalize, and you'll from the back you'll see a guy playing the guitar, and he'll go ow, and going and then they'll just move rock. on. Going from <laughs> hard rock being the favored radio thing and watching new wave come in. I mean, that, that's got to be a huge part of it. Like, and then disco, that whole, th God, it's like, God, you know, going going this movie, the main, the people who make blue planet two. You Paul, know, blue planet I, two. Have, have Paul sitting at studio 54, listening to like Saturday night fever and going, I can write this. Exactly. Well, I just I, I, actually, Izzy, I mean, you joke, but I would, I, I could see that being a, a scene as to leading into Dynasty. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And it's those little minutes like that, those little moments that would launch the next scene. That's how you piece it together. Peter with the Christmas gun shooting, with the Christmas tree, that whole bit. Mm -hmm. and, 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 li and listen, I mean, as much as it falls in the era that for the people in the U.S. don't really care about, the Unmasked tour over in Europe and especially in Australia, huge, oh, absolutely huge. huge. That, that, that's more, you know, just the Australian tour is more than Board a two-minute... More, more than a two-minute mention in a movie, so all of a sudden, does that become a significant part? Talking about going to Australia, uh, you know, it, it brings up so many of these little questions. Like, I could see them completely erasing Elder. Why even talk about the Elder? Let's skip over that. I was just going to think, well, 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 there could be a lot of infighting about the Elder, too. I mean, because that was basically why Ace wanted to get the fuck out of the band. Yeah, but if it, they wanted to, they could pay Bob Ezrin a lot of money to let them reveal his true cocaine habit during that time period and focus on Bob Ezrin for a while. And Ace Fraley, Ace in the whole studios, what was going on with Ace Fraley at that time. I think the problem there is we would the four of us would love that. Absolutely love uh, that. The I'd average move the average movie person <laughs> could give a crap that totally. that that stuff was going on. They don't even remember the Elder album because it was such poor performance in the U.S. that I think they would just... I think you would go right from Paul sitting at Studio 54 and it would segue straight to Australia. The unmasking? Yeah. I think it'll go from four guys in a room eating ham sandwiches on New Year's Eve to one day standing up, shot to them rehearsing, they go to bed, wake up, they put on the makeup, uh, the guys walk in the door, see them, flash edits, flash pods go off, and they're standing in front of 20,000 people playing rock and roll night. That's probably how it'll go, you know? Yeah, it'll be yeah so I, I, that's I, why there has to be two versions. And I, I like I, the But I want to get series. back to what you said about Bill of Coin and creativity. I want to get back to Bill was super creative on a managerial level right super super triple creative and which bled over artistically speaking it was bill who put the focus on super kiss and superheroes and not being seen without the makeup the minute that came into his view as soon as he noticed people were beginning to wonder what kiss looked like without their makeup he went that's it Nobody can see it without the makeup. That's Bill. That that's that's yeah. the creativity of the marketing and the business that he got. Uh, what what, so what, what, the, what I'm saying is equally as creative, of course. It's a, yeah, it's a different type of cre credit. You're hundred. He deserves credit. What I was saying was, you know, when it came to writing rock and roll all night, he, he probably doesn't uh, he doesn't have a clue where it was written and how it was formed and where the bits and pieces and riffs came from. He doesn't. I'm not, doesn't matter. I'm not 100% sure Bill can clap along in time with a song. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure he can. But you know what? Well, he doesn't. He, yeah. doesn't he, he didn't and, have to. And to further that point, you know, we had Jan on a couple weeks ago from. It. Yeah, we, we had Jan on a couple of weeks ago from Cream, and she even said when they were talking about taking pictures of him without makeup, they deferred to the management. Yeah. You know, so they were just doing whatever Paul and Sean, or excuse me, Bill and Sean were kind of and, creating. And, and, you know. and Casablanca, because Casablanca was, up, Larry, Larry, Larry Harris that, was given a lot of directions to him. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Made that, whatever made sense that day for the limited endgame vision that they had. You have to remember their endgame vision would change through oh through um, avail uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? The end game would change if something good came their way. That would change the direction of their end they, game. They, they, that they, day, they would, that end game they would, changed. They would pivot very quickly if something dropped into their lap that they didn't Absolutely. foresee. Absolutely. Yeah. So this grand idea that there was a point A and a point Z, and somehow Kiss made the longest Hail Mary pass in the world does not exist. No. It's A through it Z. Exist. It was day by day. Yep. day A to B, B to C, day. C to D. I, 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 do, point, point. I do think the movie needs a little bit of the um, 
rags to riches American success story, which means they've got to show a little bit of the early 70s where there were four guys in a station wagon. And, you know, Ace drinking cologne. I want to see Ace Fraley and Peter Chris like this boy's life or like De Niro in Brooklyn as little kids making zip guns and stickball. And it could almost be De Niro esque. That's, yeah. the, that's the early like the Bronx I want to see. And then Paul's family, which appeared to me to be not a super far cry from all in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see that. And I would like to see Gene in Israel. And his, really, his dad ditching. I really like how in the Motley movie they did Nikki's backstory, you know, as they're leading into it. I think they Me could do too. that with the Kiss guys very, very well. Absolutely, and it's crucial to the yeah, whole thing. absolutely. It's then you the lead Motley. up, then you lead up to uh, the Gene and Paul meeting, and then you know, moving forward from there. Yep. Eddie Kramer gets to be in there. Cool. Tom yeah. gets to be in there. Cool. Oh, the weather girl says hi. By the way, where is she? Oh. She in, she's at she, a, she in her in your freezer. <laughs> no, she's at a conference. Actually, she would have liked to be here, but she's at a conference right now. Ah, oh, like she'd like to be in your bedroom. Is that what you're saying? Well, who wouldn't? <laughs> Most. Women. I have mirrors. I've seen me. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're solid now that this doesn't hurt you. in so any cool. crazy position. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've been playing the Kiss, some old Kiss uh, snippets from the makeup commercial and the doll commercial on my radio show. You know, oh, Anth- there you go. if you can ever find it, Anthrax covered the doll commercial. Kiss, Did they really? If yeah. that's your game, Kiss. Yeah. They make the game sing. Kiss. If rock's your game, then Kiss. Oh, cool. That seems like something you could dig up for us, Izzy. Yeah, I've just... trust me, I've tried. What dig up? What the uh, the Anthrax version of the uh, the doll commercial? Well, let's just call Charlie Bonante. He'll have it. Well, I do have Joey's number. Well, yeah, give, give him a like buzz. A call. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll talk to him on the Mega Cruise. Make Perfect. a fake one and say it's them, and put it out there. They'll call you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe maybe Ac- 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 needs to do a version of it. Yeah. Is there still an Ac? There is still an Ac, yes. We actually might be doing some uh, Midwestern stuff this fall, possibly, with the West Coast <laughs> oh, version. We might possibly be. Well, I mean, Way we to can't commit. talk about it yet. <laughs> I can't talk about it yet because you know nothing's, uh, nothing's confirmed yet. So I'm just saying. You can't it's, talk about it yet. It's, it's not like there's anybody listening that is going to get upset if an act tour falls through. I know. Tommy, stop scratching. You can keep talking. People who are watching can name this tune in the background. It's not a kiss song. I'm not playing it very well either. Yeah, I am. All, all right, what, what happened to Tommy? He's frozen. I know. He's frozen. Looks rough. like he's having a heart Everybody attack. Everybody to Tommy. Oh, he crashed again. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like go. he's having we a heart attack. Him. Itching his armpit. Tommy, go and there and have a heart attack. You ought to know by now. So, so do you, do you, do you, do you do, well? Do you think a a movie, a Kiss movie, should get into some of the dirt in the Kiss history, or should it be kept? Of course, it should, should be. It, to. it should be the truth and entertaining. It, it should be the truth if it can be. It's going to have to be, I don't, you know, it's got to be all these questions. It's got to be, yes, it's got to be all of them. So hard. That's what makes it so hard. But that's what makes it interesting to talk about. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, because it's so crucial. More than just eating, you know, the original, you know, Rags to Riches story was the one that I mentioned. The original one they, that they came out with, I think, was the turkey sandwiches on new year's eve on the loft on 20 whatever street it was you know that was kind of the first classic uh semi-premeditated press release like repeated phrase or whatever you call it they used that certainly so you know that would be in there i would think gotta get carried away right away 
Yeah, you got to have those old road stories from the freaking station wagon. That shit has to be in there. Well, no, but but I'm talking about yeah, do, we're down south. That's, yeah, do, yeah. Do, I mean, stories are in the books, aren't they? Actually, the yeah. stories are in the autobiographies. That's where I would start making the movie with that, those autobiographies. I'd put them together and make a movie. Do That's, they do they include stories though? Like, well, okay, let's just be blunt. Does it include stories of wives? Yes. Gigi is in there, and and all yeah. of Ace's many girlfriends, and you know, Not obviously Paul's family, and 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 Jean's family, and all, you know, do you really get into the potential quote dirt that could come from that stuff? Yes, but you don't overplow it with that. It's a balance at that point. That's what a director's job is to make sure that balance is good. So the answer is yes, but not foregoing anything else that might need to be in there. And then all of a sudden that it becomes a game of what gets how much time. Is there any uh, worry that it's going to turn into a Gene and Paul movie? I, 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 don't, I don't think there's any worry it will be a Gene and Paul movie. Right, right. But just concentrating on Gene and Paul and having Ace and Peter be a, you know, well, just a, here, they're here, there. Here's, it would feature ace and peter much more if ace and peter would be involved with the movie but they're probably going to want a boatload of money to be involved and then at the end the production company all like the that documentary that was filmed but never released they wanted so much money to do new interviews that they just said we can't afford it we're going to use can old canned interviews so that right there brings it down a level because you got half of the band who's not involved. Unless they can use part and parcel information from the autobiographies. Because if they can buy the rights to the autobiographies to make movies with that, they have equal pretty much great information on all of them. You're, you're right. but I Then could, they're I, already involved without even having to be right. there because they've that, already done the involvement part. I would think that's a lot of money to buy the oh, movie Lord, rights, yeah. the movie rights to is. four different books, especially from two guys who are probably going to jack the price up even more than it's worth. Yep. The interesting thing is who owns those books? Owns, owns, owns. Good question. Those. Does the publisher? Does the author? Is it a combination? I don't know. I don't know. No book single writers. entity owns the book. That's for certain. So yeah. therefore, it becomes a share game, doesn't it? Who owns the most shares? Who's got yeah. Who's got the final say? Who's Who's got fifty one percent say versus forty nine percent say? Author. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I would guess. I would hope author. Yeah, because it's the author's story. Well, again, you know, as Bryn yeah, says, I would really hope. That's a nice response. I wish everything worked like that. Yeah, yeah that's right. my song. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, ne there's never been a record company that has taken all the rights away from the artist. Never. Never. Just like I'm sure there's never been a book publisher that's taken all of the rights to a book away from an author. And or paid extra money to have more rights. So... That it becomes a sliding scale. If somebody came to you and said, I'll give you $50 million and you get nothing, will you take it? I'd go, frick yeah. Don't call me. I don't need to talk to you about nothing. Thank you for the 50 mil. Really, 10, or, you know, 60 mil, not a huge difference. <laughs> so, is, is he back to your point? I, th I think Gene and Paul would like Ace and Peter involved. But I think at the end of the day, it comes down to how many hoops and hurdles and headaches does that bring along that not necessarily Gene and Paul have to deal with that then get passed along to the producer and the director to deal with right, and finally right. say, fuck this, this movie can't be finished in this situation. So they may not be involved and therefore by default it becomes a Gene and Paul movie. I just meant on screen. Well, I think on, I, I think on screen they would probably try and equally split the screen time 
as much as they can based on, you know, is, is this is this scene about all four or is this scene only about Gene and Lassie coming into the studio? You know? Oh, man, I've seen some great pictures of those up on the Facebook lately. Yeah. That Jason Gallagher guy posts just some stellar, stellar photos. From, from Gene's um, solo album recording. Uh, yeah, just always. I don't know where the guy, he is a... However, he, I, he's, he's a photo-collecting genius. I don't even yep. know what that means. But I, it is the most entertaining kiss stream, I'll call it, there is for me. Yep. You never know what's going to show up. You don't I do know. I and he's, the eras he, he favors, I think I'm right with him. I do love John Five's uh, Instagram, the Knights and Satan service, with all the old school shit that he owns. That's kind of cool cool i haven't seen that i need to follow that dude it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome yeah so you know i i think let, let's be honest it'll be a gene and paul movie i mean they're the two yeah. active guys here they're the ones cutting the deal they're they're gonna try and do as fair a representation as they can but at the end of the day if the other guys aren't involved you can only do so much if they don't want to be involved here's what i would suggest I think this movie is a huge money maker. I think on some level it's certainly going to happen and I do believe it's going to be bigger badder than the other movies we've mentioned today. I think it's going to be huge and great. I thought Kissology was great. So if they can do get close to that in that same thing it's awesome. So they had there's a lot of kiss, what do you call it? Uh, valuable stuff down the kiss line in the future. Yes. Lots of it. Yes. If I was Ace Fraley, I would start and Peter Chris, I would start selling stock in Ace Fraley and Peter Chris. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of lot I, of activities. If I was Ace Fraley, I would pull a David Bowie and make stock available in Ace Fraley. I'm not sure I'd invest in that. I would. Of course you would. A you lot eat, of You would. eat 7-Eleven pasta. And then what do you do after you invest in something like that? You work at creating even a greater value. You begin to try to increase its value. Well, mm -hmm. here's the you thing. to lobby. You... As, as if if I invested, I got no chance of in increase, increasing the value. You're counting on Ace increasing the value, and I'm not sure I could count on that. Fair statement. I count on it. Ace would need Ace and Peter would need to get some very sharp managers or, and or licensing agents. To start working and representing them. That's where. That's why you. That's why you sell stock to get that, to attract the people to get that for you, and you get paid to do it. The investors do that. Just go cut. Because that's, that's what they want. That's what David Bowie did. Just go cut a great licensing deal with somebody who's going to be your licensing agent, who's in charge of. All of that stuff. I guess that's kind of yeah, that's kind of the same thing. Same, right? same thing. Yeah. Instead of instead of having individual I'm people investing their money, which now means you're kind of just like any company, you you're, yes. you answer to all these stockholders. I am prepared to sell forty nine percent of the Ace Fraley brand. Right? Is that kind of what we're going to end up at? And then it's how much? Well, yeah, I, I think rather than selling mil? selling that 49% off to a bunch of individuals, it probably makes more sense that he finds one person, one big company who sees the revenue down the road, as you said, post-KISS here, and goes, yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy part of Ace Fraley and I'll buy part of Peter Chris for $20 million each. Yep, and, and you and three generations of your family will never have to. Yep, work you, you can now you can now retire nice and comfortably, yep. 
and we will go out there and find the deals and the relationships and the license for you and you know we will we will negotiate when it comes to the the movie you know we will represent you and then you set boundaries of first right of refusal like you would a music publishing deal yep you can't be on any you know women's sanitary napkin ads yeah no you 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 you're right i mean that that's that would be the smart way for somebody it's like real. an Ace or Peter to do it. But it's yeah, real. you you go out there and you say, "All right, you have the full rights to represent me. We have final approval on everything, and we <laughs> don't want to be on products A, B, and C. We don't want to be on hard liquor. We don't want to be on tobacco. Right. We don't want to be on sex toys. Yeah. Everything else, and go for it. And or so then, who do we want to go strike deals with? The ones nobody else wants. Let's go strike deal with sex toys people, cigarette people, and booze people. I hear they're looking for us. I heard Hell. they're looking for people. <laughs> kidding. Hell, fucking what? Gene open a fucking. I uh, might. I might Gene be, open a pot shop. I mean, anything's a. Uh, I might be a little bit of this. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not, and I'm not saying I am. But so if I do things. Sorry, Izzy, like interrupting you all the time. <laughs> It's all That's good. okay. Nobody cares. Exactly. <laughs> I do a little bit. I do a little bit. Izzy has I no listeners to care. So much. I love I had the joy of going out the night before they played here with Greg Collins and had dinner with Greg Collins at the hotel when they were in and and then went to the show with Greg Collins and and uh Grant Lindbergh from Rocksteady Records and went and did the meet and greet. And of course, I walk in there and right away, Tommy's in is, there. Is, is, Gre is, Greg, is Greg on the road? Is he mixing? Um, I'm not 100% sure what he's doing. I think he, at this time, was like helping a lot of the mixers with stuff. Yeah. Consulting, by for lack of a better term. I mean, and for those. We for have they call production seats where you have a perfect view of everything. It was just freaking incredible. For for yeah. those who don't know, Greg Collins um, was involved in Monster and Sonic Boom. Correct. So basically, Paul produced, Stanley produced it, but Greg was right produced, there. Yeah, yeah, correct. I did not know that. Yeah, and and I thought I had read somewhere that Greg is on the road with the crew doing something related to the sound. Mixing sure, the sound sure or something. Yeah, I'm sure it's sound related. Paul's but, voice track? Uh, Not that I know of. Wasn't what I saw. It was a joke. It was a joke. Chill out. We're not. I didn't. Are we getting super excited? I didn't even notice that. No. Part. <laughs> he was hoping we would. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, he's baiting. baiting he's baiting us. us. I'm, I'm, I'm really old, pretty slow. Really Me too. fragile. I'm the only one that's good at baiting people. Izzy only dreams of being able to bait people as good as I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's certainly something to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy's got to look up to something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, it ain't you, Brandon. <laughs> Maybe the guy to your right, whose name is tattooed on my arm. Mine to your right? You're on. You're on my right. Yes. Cool. I'm your right. I, I don't know man. who you're talking about. I think I'm your I, right hand man. Got a Tommy Thayer towel somewhere around here. Oh, I called Izzy at one point when we needed a guitar player to see if he wanted to come down and jam. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, you told me after the fact that you were thinking about it. Oh. But you lived out there. Then I said because you lived, I was like, no, no, no. And I, I guess then I took on the thing like, God, if he actually moved out here and did it, I don't think I can handle that responsibility for some reason, you know. But hey, at least at least by a girl somewhere. At least your old V would be on stage with Flip again. Oh, she is a beauty. Yeah, he's a one in a million V. I just sounded so Minnesota. Yeah, she's a beauty there, you know, Michael. Oh. oh, I was wondering what Izzy was going to do. Did what? Did this he? Did he go take a dump? God, it's a winter chicken dinner. Yeah. Ugh. And it's coloring, discoloring just right, and it's becoming. Oh, I know. It's beautiful. It, 
You can almost get a collector license plate for it. It's almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucking beautiful. Michael, what's your favorite Kiss album? Rock and Roll Over. Great choice. Hotter Than Hell. It's in my top three. Hotter Than Hell for me, too. Then I gotta go. Then, then the Kiss Alive thing creeps in, and then the conversation of does that one count? And it kind of does because God, the material is so different on it than it is on the studio ones. But yeah, for me, it's Hotter Than Hell, Rock and Roll Over, and a live one. For me, it would be beautiful. Rock and Roll Over, Tommy Destroyer, <clears throat> and Alive Two. Cool. Because see, I, 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 I came, I came into Kiss in the Super Kiss era. I'm I'm I'll be 55 right. this year, so it was 19. 19- and I got the first album before it hit stores. See, Columbia House Records, two weeks in really? a day. Really? Yeah. That that you know that's that's why it's different for you than it is for me and everybody else. I it wasn't until 1976 that Kiss was on my radar at all. So, you know, Kiss Alive Two is like every time I listen to that, I'm like, oh, there it is. That is my Kiss. Kiss Alive Two. So you literally just saw it in Columbia and said, these guys look cool. I have to have this. And my friends bought records. That one, it was on. It was probably under or next to, if you like these, you'll like this Some on some level. I don't know. But literally the three albums we bought were the first New York Dolls album, the first Kiss album, and Aerosmith Get Your Wings. Wow. Nice. Isn't, a penny. isn't there something, Bryn, isn't there something special? What's left, What's isn't, left really? <laughs> isn't there something special about being able to sit back and say, I bought this band's whatever album yes. when it was released? Yes, I do it. I grin at a Black Sabbath concert. I grin at a Deep Purple concert. Alice Cooper, Kiss, Stars, all of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's something and just yeah. the, the the memory of going in be- before the album was ever a hit, before there was ever a single off of it. You walked in and you bought that album, and then four months later it became a hit, and you're like, "I've had it. I've had that." It's album. Part of what makes our radio shows so satisfying is we get to kind of do that now. Like I get to go see. Hear this. Hear yep. this. Listen to Montrose, all of it. Beautiful. Although I did recently do the only first ever all eight track tape radio show broadcast. He did. He where did. Only really? Eight tracks were used. It took me like a week to queue up all these eight tracks. I was going to say, how the wow. hell did you queue that up? And and I hooked my my eight track up and everything and it's distorted and you hear like Working Man off the first Rush album in the middle of so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say, did you broad did you broadcast the hard when it switches and <laughs> yeah? Oh God, yes, of course I did. And I think I really only got it on one song and it took me forever to like learn which song it was. So when I was in the shower, I would listen to him and go, okay, the click's in this song on that album. Now I got to let it play all the way through. What's the song before that one? Okay, jump out of the shower for like a week. And that would be my shower routine is to set up a new song while I shower. Oh, okay. Set that one aside. Best of three dog night next. Okay. And they've got a great buffet at at, at the place where he records his show. That's wonderful, Shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp scampi. Mm. Yeah, uh, Victoria Productions uh, Studio Hub. There's like a really nice uh, atrium break, outdoor, indoor, outdoor break area with like an infinity um, koi thing where Tommy once tried to spear one with a straw and like a little piece of clay with a pin in it. (laughs) Didn't work. But you know, that's I don't care about going on his show for going on a show. I just like going to eat the free food. Yep. I was gonna say, what 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 radio station provides free food and a buffet of shrimp? Right. Well, Good lord. Can, let me see if I can do this. I'll show you right now. I think Izzy's oh. like, get me a job there, please. Well, like, yeah. I'm just saying, have me on can, next time I'm in town. I'm gonna make money and eat. Yeah. 
you, make you money leave and full. You leave full. Right. Oh, Wait till they get a load of today's deep cuts here on the wonderful WDGY. Go, go. And brought to you by the equally fabulous Let's Hear It for New Victoria Productions. Thank you. And I am your forever present and not so humble host, Brent Arns from Flip. I still love like it more. Yeah, it takes me where I want to go. For cool summer splashing fun, get water wiggle. It's fun. <laughs> it wiggles. It's wild, you bet. Just try to catch it and not get wet. Water wiggle. <laughs> In case you've forgotten, you are listening to Deep Cuts. Cry. This is Stars with Cherry Baby off of the 1977 album titled Violation. That's all I got. Sweet. There you go. Fucking cool. So, all so right. a little little so plug. Else. Where, where, where can people listen to that? How do you listen? DGY, it's a classic rock station. It was here when you were young. Yeah, uh, it was country. Been, I remember it as a country station when I was yeah, growing up. Yeah, they country for a while, but they were like playing No Sugar Tonight in my coffee. Like the and week and came if I remember correctly, WDGY was the presenting radio station at the great that Kiss's Great American Music in-store appearance. Yeah, I believe that to be true. It was a short I, period of time where there. they went rock. I was there too, guys. I went there, and I couldn't get in, but Kai, my little brother, if you guys know Kai Arns, is a great freaking artist, sp- directed the first music video for the, uh, help me out, Izzy, for the new Elton John movie. Yes, yes. I, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I just remember reading that. He told me all about it when I picked him up, and he was my Lyft passenger. Yeah, that he, I just talked to him yesterday. He said, he, I, get, I keep getting Izzy's car. I said, awesome. Um <laughs> But where awesome? We, Wouldn't that be more of a sorry? Yeah, I got maybe. <laughs> sorry to hear that, Kai. It could get worse. <laughs> you definitely know when Izzy picks you up in his lift. He's not. He doesn't have a like a shrimp platter out there for you. No, no shrimp. Oh, that's right. I was like, God, what were we talking about? Yeah, but yeah, the the recording suites out there, Victoria New Victoria Productions are really nice. Keith Johnson is the producer. So, 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 just for our listeners' sake, you got to. I don't be, know you what WDGY. The best way is listen online. Yes, go to so online. WDGY.com. It's that simple. Listen online. Sunday mornings is my show. Sweet. And the time can vary. They've moved it on me three times, so I got nothing. <laughs> Is it how long is the show? An hour? Half hour, mine is. Half hour. Yeah. Uh, it's about that's about. Then I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> He's home and in bed by eight thirty. <laughs> Rock stars. I know. It is what it is. All right, all right. So did we? Did we? We beat the topic to death. Anything more we want to say about the Kiss movie? God. Okay. Yeah. Who else could get so close to making the movie without actually making it? With with changing the characters to where it doesn't matter, where it's now not Star Guy and Demon, we just change those names and that makeup. You know, as the Rose was to the Janis Joplin story. Then you end up with the Donnie Most in that TV show. But I'm just asking that it, the Rose is stellar. <laughs> Most Donnie Most. What did he do? He oh, he played God. a rock star in. Oh, what, what was, was the that? name? Leap. See that then? You mean the guy from Happy Quantum Day? Leap? Yeah. yeah, Quantum Leap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. There was that Kiss yeah. episode of Quantum Leap. Absolutely, that's what you end up with. So we don't want to go there. No. I'll tell you, happy days, whoever was in charge of their vintage equipment, like whenever they had bands on there, Izzy, you probably know this, dead on it. 50, 50, 54 Les Pauls, little, everything's totally period correct, and it's the coolest shit. Yes. I believe it. It's amazing. I Even didn't notice I, any of that. I just I, I noticed, it. I noticed it on leather first... and pinky, and that was it. I was just like, oh. Yeah. I too, but moreover. Les Paul. 
So I'm in the Gibson showroom. I'm managed by David Krebs at the time, and we're doing an acoustic number. And I didn't own an acoustic guitar at that time. I still don't. I've never owned one except for my very first guitar ever, which was a Stella Harmony, which I guess it's an acoustic guitar, but it's kind of like cardboard at the same time. But so I went across the street to the Gibson showroom uh, in Manhattan, and the A&R guy brought me up there from Sony Records, and I'm playing a, an acoustic guitar, and I'm trying out a few of them, and I'll put a tap on my shoulder, and I turn around, there's a guy in a black satin jacket, or maybe, no, it was white satin jacket, and it, with black writing outside of less. And he goes, your hands sound great, kid. You got good hands. It was Les Paul. That's wow. amazing. That's was cool. Amazing. You never told me that story. It was a private Gibson showroom. So it yeah. wasn't a store, so you could only certain people could go. And I wasn't one of them. I was brought up there, certainly. But Les Paul did tap me on the shoulder and go, you got great hands, kid. Hands that's, sound great. That's awesome. That's, from playing a Stella. That's quite a compliment. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I'm he not, has all those. He's I'm got smiling. tons of stories like that. You'd be shocked. And every once in a while, one of them will come out in, in the conversation, and I'll be like, wait a minute, rewind that and say that again? And he's like, what do you mean? I didn't tell you that already? Happy days. Like, oh. Les Paul Jr.'s, the kind Ariel Bender from Mata Hoople would play. Coolest like, rock star name ever. Two, two, two knobs, you know the type, Izzy. It, it, literally, you put one on, your penis gets bigger. It just does. <laughs> literally, it, they will make your penis bigger. Yeah, one of those. I was going to say, is, he's on the lookout for one of those now. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get one of those. Pick up Maybe you'll finally get some boobs. You probably need to actually get two or three. <laughs> oh, there, had be, there had to be at least seven boobs in the room. Twenty-three <laughs> boobs. Always an odd number of boobs. Just make stick to an odd number of breasts, you'll be fine. It goes well with my three balls. Yeah. Okay. Did I see a cricket? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You guys froze. Is is Izzy's jokes just don't go over well? No. <laughs> so okay. Anything so, else? Or so that, I think I think we're good. I think we can call okay. it a day. So well, let's let's do right, one more we, one we, more plug for Bryn. The new flip, flip album. Oh, the new flip album. Uh, hold on. It's Peter true. Chris says. Best album that he's ever seen where his doll was that physically close to it. So that a alone, hey, a ask Peter how does how does the flip album compare to Peter's last solo album? Um, I was actually trying to make a flip album, but I didn't. Fair enough. That sounds like an Izzy joke. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. And I suppose it is, and freaky too. It's like these really dumb half cent things. So you wear? Something like that. You know, nothing. God. All oh, right, Lord. everybody, okay. go go check out, go get the new Flip album. The, the worst, the best, was it the best oh. of the worst? The best of the worst of Flip on David Ellison's label um, and Rocksteady Records. It's happening. It's doing great, so I'm totally pleased. Are the, uh, are the packages... Check out Rocksteady, go to Rocksteady Records' Facebook and always check out the cool stuff that's going well, on. Well, yeah, they've got Rocksteady t-shirts and stuff, too, so there's other yeah. stuff like that that people... Clay Howard, fantastic Clay, Clay Howard Ta 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 Tommy, Bryn was telling us that the best-selling Rocksteady product... Is the Night Bob T-shirt? He's oh, the number gotcha. one Rock City record selling artist. I'm Night on. Bob. I'm on the list for the next printing of those T-shirts. He just shipped cardboard, <laughs> and that's what your shirt will come in. Nice. Well, I, I'm waiting for the cardboard them. award. They yeah. all Brent, ship cardboard. Brent, are the bundles still available? With the T-shirt, CD, T-shirt, album. Through the label. That isn't something that we do, but it's okay. through the label. Yep. But I'm sure there's a link once again from Rocksteady Records straight to uh, EMP. Okay. Awesome. 
kids get out there support what the, is, it, is there a flip website i don't think so just facebook no, them no more flipcentral.com i know i went to it today and i'm like it's not there it was such Check a cool. The- it was such a cool looking website. It was. It was awesome. It was a fun, and it was like so on the front end of people having websites. Yep. So so check out Flip on Facebook. Check yeah. out new Flip song called "The Ride" too. It, I'm telling you, it's Dude. on the it's on the best of worst of Flip. I'm not a hundred percent sure what it sounds like. Um, I was but, there when you wrote it. But uh, were you? Yeah, when you guys started jamming it at one of your rehearsals. I remember, and I'm like, I really like that. You you had two songs you were working at the same time. One went into the other, and I'm like, I really like that second one. That was what that was the ride. It was it a little bit not like this. The new, the new flip single. As we sign off. Bye, Bobby. Thank you, Brad. This is awesome. I got to tell you, that was probably one of the most challenging three sides of the coins for me to manage and do the production on. Izzy and Bryn are just like all over the place. I know. In a good way, people. In a good way. Being around those two at the same time is like being pecked to death by a chicken. Uh, I know. I, you know, it's like when I said, you know what? Bryn's mm-hmm. our guest today, and I go, Mark can't be here, so let me get Izzy. And I'm just like, oh, Izzy and Bryn together, this is going to be a wild ride. Mm-hmm. Totally. And then I was having computer problems, so I'm having a new computer. Adrian's going to build me a new computer in the next couple of weeks. It just keeps crashing on Skype, and I'm not sure what's going on. So my send, apologies send, send to you guys. Send your old one to Mark. It's probably better yeah, than what he has. It, it probably is. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. So um, homework. I think the obvious <laughs> question is a Kiss movie. What do you think? What should be yeah. in it? Should it cover the uh, whole timeline of Kiss, a certain era of Kiss? What stories have to be in it? Give us your take on what you think a Kiss movie should look like. Yeah, expand on our ideas or, or give us something original that we didn't discuss. Yeah. Exactly. And and listen, let's try and be realistic about it. Yeah, we would all love a 12-part movie. It ain't going to happen. Right, you're so it's got to be realistic. You're going to get one 90-minute movie here. What yeah. is in that 90-minute movie? I think that's a good the good way to frame it. Um, so head over to facebook.com slash three sides of the coin, YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, everywhere you can find us. Leave your comments. Do us a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave us yeah. a rating and a comment on iTunes. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, that's it. We're out of here. Oh, well, I think it's it's also fair to say that we really appreciate you guys making comments, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube. Oh, but just course, because you yeah. comment does not mean you're coming on the show to defend yourself. <laughs> exactly. Please. I heard all about we'd, that. We'd, we'd, frick, we'd, we'd frickin' have nothing but fans on this show if we let everybody who wanted to open their trap. And Sorry, it's our show. We get to do what we want. Suck it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> all right, that's it, guys. We're out of here. See you. So you love the show. Go to iTunes.3SidesOfTheCoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. You love the show. Go to iTunes.3SidesOfTheCoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.